Hey folks, I'm Demotro, and I've recently been doing some thinking about hexagons, and I found a connection between them, as well as with some other polygons, and a seemingly unrelated concept, factorials, written with an exclamation point like that, where you multiply all of the whole numbers between one and some other whole number. And I recently made a whole episode about hexagons on my main Combo Class channel about how I think their patterns are hidden inside bananas, and that's linked in the description here. But I didn't put this fun fact I found in that episode, partially because this is going to be dependent on a particular system of measurement, which is calling the amount of angle in a full spin of circle 360 degrees, as opposed to other ways you could measure it, such as in radians or other metrics. And since this is arguably not even my favorite of the ways of measuring it, and is just one way that it's taught in some areas and some times of history, this fact, you know, is a bit dependent on that historically current trait that many people like me learned that in school before we encountered things like radians. But I still think the connection, despite being dependent on that, may show some fun little mathematical patterns that polygons have in general, as well as that factorials have. And the connection turns out to be a particular trait about 360. Despite there being many historical factors as to why we have settled on that when we're talking about degrees instead of another amount of degrees like say why not 200 or 400 when you use something called gradients they split it into 400 but those are worse because 400 is not as divisible as 360. 360 is a highly composite number. One of the whole numbers with more factors or more ways you could divide it without a remainder than any smaller number leading up to it. And in fact, 360 is such a powerful highly composite number that not only does it have more divisors than anything up through 359, but it also has at least as many divisors as everything up to twice it, up to 720. So if you wanted a number here to split this into a different number of degrees that was more than 360 and had more ways to divide it than 360, you'd have to go all the way up to 720. And 360's highly compositeness is very likely why uh, amidst many historical reasons, like it relating to 60s, which some societies counted in, and it being close to the amount of days in a year, and this feeling sort of like that in a way, the highly compositeness is certainly why it's stuck around so long. It's useful being able to divide smaller angles out of that 360 and express them as a whole number. And a lot of important angles in different types of math, like trigonometry, for example, can be expressed as a whole number because that particular fraction is something 360 is divisible by. Now, how does that relate to hexagons and how does that relate to factorials? Well, 360 is the amount in one spin, but if we add up all of these interior angles, it turns out to be more than one spin. A square, for example, if we add up all those corners, has exactly 360 degrees worth of angle in there. A triangle has half that amount, has 180 degrees of angle, and hexagons turn out to have twice that amount. So hexagons have that 720 we mentioned there total inside. And in fact, if we looked at a regular hexagon where all of the angles are the same and all the sides are the same, then each of those angles would be 720 divided by six, which is 120. So let's note that each of these is 120 and that here we have 720 degrees total and that this is six-sided. And then let's note 
that if I took six, the amount of sides here, factorial, multiplying one through six, that is precisely 720. And this was the first fact that, that I realized that made me want to make a bonus video about this before I'd stumbled into some more neat stuff was that, hey, the six-sided polygon has six factorial degrees. And that made me wonder, are there other regular polygons that have traits like that? And when I looked a little deeper, I found another factorial even inside here. 120 is five factorial, because since it has six sides, it has six angles. And if we take six factorial divided by six, that's like taking that part out and just multiplying that part. And so we have five factorial degrees per angle if it's a regular hexagon. And for any hexagon, we have six factorial internal degrees total. Now, I decided, why don't we look for if there are others like that? Is that the only, you know, polygon that's going to have a factorial amount of total degrees? Or are there others? And if so, is there a finite amount or a pattern that would allow an infinite amount? And so I whipped out the formula for how many degrees are inside a polygon with a certain amount of sides. And if we look at the pattern here, 180, 360, we skipped the pentagon, went two sides up and went to 720. We can kind of see we're going up 180 degrees whenever we add a side. And so it turns out that if I have an n-sided regular polygon, it'll have n minus two times 180 degrees. Basically, if you consider how the triangle has three sides and 180 degrees, if we subtract three minus two to get one, that's sort of the seed of the pattern. 180 degrees for three minus two times, because it has three sides. And then adding 180 each can be expressed in that form. And so if we look at 180 here, that's not quite a factorial. It is a quite divisible number. But once we get up here and we've increased that to n being four, and now we're at two times 180, we're at 360 and we've gotten to this super divisible amount and the full spin. 360 also is not a factorial though, because if I look at what makes up 360, while it's really divisible, it actually, let's see what it would have. It would just have the three times, four times, five times, that's 60 times six. So we would just have that chunk of it. And we can't express that as a factorial because there's that extra two on the way for the factorial. Now, once we get up two more sides, we are now at six minus two times 180. And this whole chunk we've said can be expressed as that. That 720 was six factorial. So let's write it in that form for a minute. Six factorial equals six minus two times 180. Now, as we go up in more sides, what we're going to be doing is adding one to this section that we are multiplying by 180. We are going to have more quantities of 180. And when will be another time when an amount of quantities of 180 could be expressible in a factorial-like string like this? Well, if this whole chunk was perfectly four times the 180, the next factorial on the way is going to be times seven. That's gonna get me to seven factorial, and seven factorial we can express as six factorial times another seven after that. 
And that would mean we can express it, you know, as this whole chunk times seven, giving us seven times four, one eighties, meaning that this can be expressed as 28, which is seven times four times 180. Now, this is going to be a polygon because we said that for an n-sided polygon, it will have two less than n times 180. And so this will perfectly match 30 minus two times 180, meaning that's the amount of degrees in a 30-sided polygon. In a 30-sided polygon, there are 5,040 internal degrees, which is seven factorial. And we could continue the pattern, I realized, because multiplying by eight and nine and onward will be quantities of 180. And as we continue to go upward, while it'll quickly get to large sizes of how many sides are on the polygons we're talking about, any further factorial, although not all the factorials leading up to that place, all the factorials from this point onward will have some corresponding polygon that the amount of internal angles of that expressed in degrees will be that factorial. So leave a comment if you can figure out what the next one would be or any further ones in the pattern or even any other interesting connections you can find between angular measurements and factorials. Now, that was just a little fun bonus video. Make sure you also check out the main combo class episode that I just put out recently, which is about some real easy shortcuts for you to determine whether any two digit number is prime super quickly. So that's on the main combo class channel linked in the description along with some other cool links. Thanks for joining me here today and I'll catch you in the next one.